Good morning, everyone. This is the life, isn't it? Welcome back to the Horn Hangouts. I'm on a chaise longue, or however you pronounce it, if I pronounced it wrong, sorry about that, um, at the Curtis Institute of Music with my Horn Hangout mug, with some cushions, with a microphone actually pack sticking into my back, but never mind. Um, I am here in some room that I can't pronounce, Voronovsky, I'll just ask in a moment how to pronounce that, at the Curtis Institute. And today we have a very special live horn hangout with the wonderful Jen Montone, who, this is the reason you're all watching, I know, principal horn of the Philadelphia Orchestra. And she is here this morning with her students from the Curtis Institute. And we thought we'd start off with a bit of music, because how better to start off a horn hangout than with a bit of music? We know you're watching from all over the world, from Korea, all around America. Korea, it's now midnight or something. Hey, Michal, isn't it midnight? Um, we've got people all over, Gary, Cindy, Lewis, um, Hadley, you're all over the States. I want to know where you're watching from. And um, yeah, talk amongst yourselves, talk to us, send your questions in for Jen. For everybody watching on Facebook, Facebook, we're just trying to get you over to the, to the live page so that you can ask your questions. Facebook is great for, for live streaming, but I can't see the questions. I've got my iPad here, and the questions I've got here are on, um, on the live page on sarahwillis.com um, slash live. So that's the best place to get your questions in. If you write questions on Facebook, Jen will have a look at them afterwards, and she'll answer them all, won't you, Jen? Um, so for now, I'm going to lie back. Even, even further, and I introduce to you Jen Montone and the Curtis Horns. Thank you. 
I introduced you all to them here on, I, I got your names, you're, in, a, you're in, the, in the row. You'll be seeing them a little bit later on. But um, to the Curtis Horns and Jen, thank you very much, guys. That was wonderful. There's applause coming in from all over the world. So you take a seat back here. We'll get Jen. I mean, that's just an amazing way to start the day, don't you think? What a fantastic way to start the series. Welcome. Where should we put your horn? Where should we put your horn? <laughs> May, may I introduce the wonderful Jen Montone? I would like to hear some applause from all over the world. Thank you, and in the room. <laughs> Is your microphone on? Do we have everything we need? We are just waiting for, Handsome Tim is here as well, everybody. Would you just come in and say hello to the, I am very, very happy and proud to say that I have a visitor from Melbourne. <laughs> Came all the way over. What time is it in Melbourne? I think it's about 2 a.m. <laughs> so, I'm feeling great. I'm and, feeling fantastic. And you, you arrived before you left. Yeah, that's the way I like to travel. Always be early. So, right. <laughs> okay, well, thank you. Don't fall asleep. And um, we have Devon uh, manning the chat, yes, which is great. Jen's microphone is on. He might have to uh, fiddle around in oh, your... Come with me. Uh, right. Talk amongst yourselves. Tim is about to delve down the back of Jen, Jen's trousers. So, so I'll just carry on here. I'm just going to say a big hello to everybody watching. Andrew Bain is watching. Hello, Andrew, in sunny California. Well, it, um, it wasn't actually very sunny this last week I spent with Andrew Bain and his family and his horn, Curtis Horns, uh, Curtis Horns. Colburn Horns, and it was freezing in LA. That's really quite outrageous. So Andrew's watching, Luke F. Horn Patrick is watching, um, Stephen R. says greetings from Toronto, Fred in Florida, um, Eric in Philly, uh, Eric Philly, either his name is Eric Philly or he is in Philly, um, Reinhard in Germany, um, Ta, uh, Aloha, H Hawaii, There's some people watching in Hawaii. This isn't making you feel any That's less crazy. Uh, excited, but this is really what Trondheim, the entire Trondheim horn class is watching in very snowy Gary Coo in LA. Oh my goodness. Look what um, you've created. This, this beautiful international horn world. Oh I my created goodness. it with Tim, but they are watching because of you. Wow, thank you. So this is great. Tim, how are we doing with the setup? We're doing perfectly. Can we, can we lounge or, or? Are we in the shot if we lounge? Bravo. Thank you. <laughs> it's it's you know, a little bit stressy to, it's 10 o'clock on a Sunday morning. Yes. And I just admire your focus and your horn playing and your personality. I've never started a horn hangout so relaxed because just before we went live, you, what, what did we do? What did you do? That's, is, this, is this a ritual of yours? Well, um, well, Jack actually uh, led us through a little breathing gym thing in the other room right before we started. And yeah, the breathing was uh, a breathing gym, you know, Sam Palafian uh, type of, you know, just a tiny little capsule of what they do on their video and their book. Um, breathing gym is for people that don't know this. Um, yes. We have we have three cameras set up here. Tim, how are we doing? Is that Jen's camera? Are we looking at? Yeah. That's my camera right behind is Victoria. <laughs> And then um, this is our main one. So um, uh, can you just let us quickly know what that is? And maybe one of you can put the, the, the link to it in the chat. That would be amazing. Yeah, Breathing Gym is a fabulous uh, book and video resource. You can find it kind of anywhere, Amazon for sure. And um, yeah, I worked with Sam Playfian a little bit when I was in high school up at Tanglewood. And um, he sort of started me thinking about how much just uh, being able to count on the air and being able to always find, you know, like the the comfort of knowing that there will always be air in your body and you can always use it towards what you want. <laughs> so. Air is our best friend. It really is. But air is the first thing we all forget yes. to, um, to do. Oops. Yeah. Tim, Tim's running rhythm, around out of the cave. Yeah. Air and rhythm. I right. mean, yeah. They're both so reliable. Why is that? We'll get to that. <laughs> um, just a few more hellos. Ken Fisher is watching in Ann Arbor. Good morning, Ken. Um, uh, uh, Victoria, your mum is watching. Melissa. Um, Kuo, Kuo Hua in Taiwan. M. Pritchard in sunny Florida. Young Horn. A young horn. That's, we're young horns. Uh, Indiana. Cindy Williams. Ben in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, Betsy Bobo has just said, great opening. Curtis Horns. 
Really, we love this. We absolutely <laughs> adore um, the Horn Hangouts and how, how global it gets. So yes. keep writing in and letting us know. Are we doing, are we doing okay? Um, keep writing in <laughs> and let us know where you're watching from. That would be absolutely great. If you're watching on Facebook, we'd love you to put your questions in um, the live page chat because I, can't, I haven't got Facebook here. It's too distracting because on Facebook, I can't seem to work out how to see the chat without seeing everyone who joins and uh, and there's a lot of people watching so it gets very uh, very busy on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So, um, hola guapas, Kevin is watching in uh, Colombia. Besitos, Birmingham, England, okay. Poland, I tell you. Devin has put in the, um, the link to Breathing Gym. Oh, so, let's get back to Horn. You do a lot of preparation. You you have a toolbox. I Jane. have a toolbox. Yes, I and love I having a toolbox. I love that <laughs> idea, and I have just experienced live your toolbox. Uh, oh. Something, and you take breathing gym out of your toolbox before yes. you, before you play. Tell I us. do. Yeah, breathing gym is wonderful. Um, I uh, we did a couple of things right before we started. There's a ten toes meditation um, that I learned from Julie Landsman, my teacher, um, and I, I sometimes extend it. I have uh, I have a version on my website which has a, sort of a tree pose part of it where you lift up your toe and then you put. Oh, I'm looking at it. <laughs> you lift up your toe and then you uh, exhale it down into the ground. And then you, um, as you do that, you imagine a tree root growing into the ground. And then the next toe, and then it goes deeper is and it, it a finds is it water a quick one? and it's grounded. Is it huh? a quick one to do? Sure. Can we all, can we all do it? It's ridiculous, but yes. Can well, we all do it? I'll, I'll okay, it. okay, everybody, we're going to be doing uh, the tree root yes. toe, what's it called? It's ten toes, ten toes, and I turn it into a tree, a tree root exercise. Okay. Also, we ready? So we can do it with a. We'll we'll do with both big toes. Lift them up and inhale, and then exhale them into the ground. And imagine a tree root growing, and going into the ground. You can all also imagine your sits bones sort of grounded into your chair as an extension. Or chaise lounge. Or chaise lounge. <laughs> Both of your second toes up. And as you inhale, you can imagine the, the branches of your tree going into the, into the air. And then the tree root, second toe tree root growing down into the ground farther. And it finds some water at the water table. Third toes up. You imagine the sun and the sun is shining on your tree branches and the leaves start to grow. And then down into the ground, exhale. And your tree roots start to sort of branch out also and finger styles start to seep through the ground, extending your stability and your groundedness. Fourth toes, you open your whole chest, your whole face, your whole body to the openness of the sun and its nourishment. And then grounded down into the ground. You're stable, secure, connected. Fifth toes. Breathe deep. Take in the air. Take in the warmth. Push down into the sits bones. Push down into the ground. And the tree roots extend. Open your eyes. Hello. <laughs> now this is great because you can do this maybe in bars rest. You don't yes. want to really shut your eyes a lot on stage, but you can do yes. this if you're getting a little little sort of anxious or Indeed. or yes. preoccupied or just even you know we have these two sides of our brain, one that is doing what it's learned and the other side which is panicking. Yes. And exactly. this is this is my life goal is to shut this side of my brain off. I, I love that expression life goal because that's what I feel like this has become for me also is like being able to manage those two powers and forces within me and use them for good rather than for ill. Is there anything <laughs> good about this panicky side? I think it's enthusiasm. I think if we're feeling tired or down, I think that's the part of us that cares deeply. I'm trying really hard not to attack it or be angry at it for existing. I think it's a reflection of my caring about it and wanting like I'm I've got all this big personality side of me that like wants, you know, like wants to grow, wants to strive, wants to, you know, like do things and improve and 
that's great a joy wonderful and thing you that's just said. that's what the <laughs> you know that's, that's fantastic that because crazy we, side is the negative mirroring of that but it is a good power and I think it's worthwhile so that's a wonderful thing you say because and and this is pro oops sorry bang the microphone this is a problem of mine as well as probably a lot of people watching um, we we react negatively when we notice negative things happening sure. it's like don't think of the elephant don't think of the elephant everybody <laughs> don't think of an elephant <laughs> Everybody watching the horn hang and it's thinking of an elephant. So if this is go carrying on, or which way does it come? Which is which brain is it? Left or right? The disturbing one, the right uh, brain. Uh, you tell us like on the chat. <laughs> um, uh, I I react. Oh no! Oh, shh, don't be quiet. But if we can maybe embrace that and say, mm -hmm. oh, here comes the creative side trying to tell me that right. that you know things are a yes. little bit uh, hairy. Yeah. Um, well, in the moment, what I like to do with that is um, I try to get myself down energy before I start something. I like this one that I showed you, the tree tree roots one, and then I also have like a hula hoop one, which um, like Hillary Hahn. It's from Don Green. Maybe. Did you see? Did it, Hillary, no, but she she posted something recently. Oh. Of, she was playing the violin and hula hooping. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. You know what? She's I should so have brought talented. a hula hoop. That's we ridiculous. should have tried that. <laughs> yeah, that's a Don Green one. Um, and maybe she does it too. But yeah, it turns into a ring of fire and then a ball of fire. And then it kind of goes up your spine and then out your eyes and sort of power. So the tree root one is for when I need to calm down. The other one is just to focus power and concentration and just like focus into a, a point. And I think that attaches to a meditation practice, which I always recommend. And I find it immensely helpful. Do you have a, yeah. a special meditation practice? I, I did a Ayurvedic mm -hmm. retreat, you know, a yogi oh, thing. Amazing. And I, I discovered I think I'm the worst meditator, in which the, the, the <laughs> online viewers probably saw because I was I, just now, because I, I had a quick look around the room right. to make sure everything was going. If you're really in the space, you don't care about what's going on I around know. you. I can't get there either. Yeah, it's not <sighs> it's, my what, personality. What, do you have an app? Do you... No, um, I, I recommend anything you can find. I mean, I... Uh, headspace is helpful. Um, that's a really good basic. Um, I like meta meditations, which are loving kindness meditations, because I tend to feel like I play better from a, a generous heart rather than a fearful heart. So it helps me to transition my brain into that. So that's you fantastic. Know, so and anything you find online generally will be good. But in terms of like f using the using the um, the ah in the moment, I find that either. If I ride the energy wave, if I convert like my crazy wild thinking into like momentum, like body rhythm and energetic, like, you know, like forceful, you know, gusto, then that's one way and that's electrifying and that's great. Um, or if I am playing something that's lyrical and I'm starting to get crazy brained, then I'll put it into like, crazy I'm going to phrase it, right? I love it. <laughs> like, I'll be like, and I'm going to phrase it here and I'm going to diminuendo and then I'm going to, you know, grow to this and then send off that top and then I'm going to make sure to do that color and that harmony change. And that's for the I practice kind of, room. Yeah, no, but in, in, oh, you in find the orchestra you find, That's too. for the orchestra. You yeah. tell yourself what you're going to do. Because ah. it keeps it alive for me. And it shuts off then the panic. Yes, because then you're just, you're sculpting and you're creating and that yeah. means every concert is slightly different and then you're in this creative brain you know kind of using the momentum that the crazy brain gives you yeah. so this I is, like to this is fun when did you start scale. realizing that you needed something extra apart from scales and arpeggios mm -hmm. and and long notes when did, when did when did you think when did you I remember vividly the moment I realized horn playing was actually quite scary I remember the knees shaking and I remember think, seeing the people and my mouth was dry and I didn't know what was happening to me I thought what is this yeah. and I remember asking for a chair and having to sit down and uh, it was at school and and uh, yeah and then I did, for a long time I just thought that was it before I realized okay you have to do something about this when There's when did, when did it hit <laughs> yeah um, for me, it was definitely college. I think in high school, I, I look back on that and I'm like, wow, I was just fearless. I just didn't know. But I'd say everybody, great? Right? Oh. Oh. But everybody, it kicks in at different times. I think some people, it actually doesn't really kick in. Like a lot of people are totally chilled out. I mean, Jeff Lang, my colleague, he's just so calm about everything. I think he's everything. watching, actually. I think I saw, I think I'm sorry, I'm watching. Yeah, it's incredible. But yeah, I mean, I think it's great. So. Uh, yeah, for me, um, Julie Landsman at Julia, she had us work with Don Green, and that was wonderful. wonderful. And yeah. it just started my awareness of, like, oh, there's books out there. There's soprano on there's our There's a head. horn hangout with Don Green. Tell us exactly. The <laughs> horn hangout with Don Green. Link to horn hangout, it's, please, Devin. So much with, out Don, there. with Don Green. Actually, Devin, um, who's been wonderful, he's been helping. He's from Canada. He's been helping mm. us out with our website. Yes. So he's online. If you guys have any questions, which I don't get to, um, he's asked, how much meditation do you do a day? 
Good I question. just do a couple of minutes. I do five minutes. Thank goodness every you said day. that. And the yogis do like they get up I at four know. and do two hours. Well, I, <laughs> I have two children. I should do more. Like I'll absolutely say I. I it, it's so beneficial that um, whenever I have something big coming up and you know I know that I'm starting to get nervous about it, I will increase what I do, both yoga and meditation wise. Um, but it's sort of yeah. I, I generally I, I chastise myself in that I know if I had a bigger practice of yoga and meditation and everything on the mental side of things, I probably wouldn't freak out and then have to medicate as needed, which I feel like I do. So that's, that's my goal lately. So yoga is in your toolbox as well. Integral. Yes. Yeah. And but you're a mom of, you're a mom of two, two young people. Speaking of moms, my mom's watching. Can we say hello, hello to my mom? Hi. Hello, hello, mom. <laughs> she's very, she's very loyal. She's always so on the nice. horn hangouts. And moms are so, so Aww. important. I think um, my mom is going to try to watch. Yes, too. great. Well, <laughs> okay. if, if Jen's mom is watching, please write in and say hello. Um, so yoga is in your, your two. How do you manage I mean, you can't sit and meditate with your two boys running around, mm. or can you? No, I, I can lock whatever door of whatever room I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> Mommy! <laughs> uh, yeah, um, right, and then you do get some banging, but that's also good. Um, no, I, I just, I find time, I meditate at work. Um, and then I do do yoga in front of my children. We do it together, which is really cute. Aww. They're learning it in preschool and kindergarten and stuff, which is adorable. Do you so. have any particular uh, yoga moves? Don't worry, I'm not going to make you do them. Eric Terwilliger made me lie down on the floor in the hangout, and I was wearing this short skirt, and I was like, <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, I mean, he was saying, now we relax, and all I could think was the Horton Hangout audience can see up my skirt. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a good feeling. So, um, so, but I found some, there's some ones like when you, when you sit with your legs out and then stretching over. Over, where you're supposed to be able to touch mm -hmm. your toes, but who can do right, that? Yeah. Um, and that's supposed to really relax all the nervous system and, and in your back and everything. Yeah. That's quite a good one for breathing. Yes, definitely. Yeah, I like anything. I mean, obviously, all of yoga is like either concave or convex. Um, so I, I just alternate between those two. And I do all of my yoga at home. I've done a lot of classes at it, but um, but I haven't lately. And um, but yeah, they the, my students know my favorites. Um, generally, with me, I tend to go shoulder in and kind of of clench like it's so. like audition mode yes it, audition mode this is like, audition ah. mode until we start and then we like, go yeah. yes so I try I, my balance of concave and convex is weighted towards the shoulders back opening up the shoulder blades and <gasps> free open chest kind of thing so yeah. I tend to do a lot of those yeah um, Ernie is watching Hello from Philadelphia. Hi, Ernie. Hello, Ernie. He's Hello, probably Ernie. in the building. <laughs> yeah, hey, Ernie, if you're nearby, come in. Come you're in. welcome. You're welcome. Tim, I wonder, can you swing over and just show our audience today? Can you manage that? Mm -hmm. And you guys wave because I want to just, just when you hear people laughing, these are who you're seeing. They're all over here. That's right. There you go. Say hi. There we go. We're in a tiny room. So, yeah, but tiny. Sarah's doing, what's, what's going the name to do a of class word? at 11 o'clock. That's right. Horzowski? Her, her Horzowski room. Horzowski. Horzowski. Yes. <laughs> Curtis has these beautiful old, you know, we're in the old building of Curtis, and they have these beautiful rooms that are um, dedicated to some of the performers and teachers at the school. So there's a tabuto room that's upstairs, but it gets worse internet connection. So uh -huh. we chose but that's the, where uh, I always try to teach in tabuto because uh, a big A big thanks to period. Curtis for letting us do this, and also to Matt who came in this morning at nine o'clock and helped us with all the connections. So I'm very, very glad Curtis is joining the yes, live streaming world. I'm thrilled you're with, here. And soon there will be a Jen Montone room, I hope. Oh. No. <laughs> Not before there's a Mason Jones room, I'm guessing. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, let's get back. We've still we've got people everywhere. Cindy from Taipei. Hi, Cindy. Dr. Helen is watching um, from London. Howard Pink in Nashville. Chelsea from Atlanta says shout out to Max and Felix. Um, oh. uh, <laughs> Come on in. Max and Felix. Hi, Ernie. I, I, and Ernie <laughs> has joined us. Hey, Ernie. Ernie is fourth horn in the... Just want to come and wave yeah. in the camera, Ernie. Just come and, say, come and say hi. I know, you didn't expect that, did you? I know. Ernie is fourth horn yes, in Philadelphia he's Orchestra. Fourth horn. Good morning. Nice to meet you. Wave. There you go. Yeah. Hi, dear. How are you? Oh, That's so nice when colleagues come. You want to go and join the rank? There you go. Okay. My colleagues have a very busy weekend. But I know. They say it's hi. lovely that you came. Yes. Especially as low horn, uh, low horn power. <laughs> um, we're in Philadelphia. Yes. And I've been here once a long time ago, and we stayed right next to the Liberty Bell. Um, but uh, a lot of people haven't been to Philadelphia before. And Victoria, your uh, Victoria. 
not knutzen, is that right? Or do you say knutzen? In Germany they say knutzen, but they say knutzen. She went off and made a tiny little film um, about where we are today. And we'd right. like to show you that, Tim. Great. You haven't even seen it yet, actually. <laughs> <laughs> we will show it to you so after. But <laughs> thank city you. Pride. Yeah. Philly's big yeah. on city pride. Yeah. So Thanks so much to Victoria and also to Andrew who helped made that make make it. So Jack. Uh, Jack, sorry, Andrew Jack. God, I'm good. Andrew, I made a Jack. Okay, I've got got it. Jack. I'm sorry, Jack. <laughs> Apologies. There's uh, a lot of A names this year. Yes. Uh, well, Jack isn't one of them. <laughs> <laughs> So let's carry on. We've got some questions coming in, and, and Mutsumi from Osaka has just joined in. I tell you, we are so global today. Um, Hadley would like to know how much tabuto does tabuto tabuto does Jen incorporate in her playing and her teaching? Because tabuto, oh. explain who tabuto is for the people that okay. don't know. Yeah. Um, so one of the things I love about Philly and the Philly Orchestra and the way it aligns with Curtis is that there's this history and tradition of both string playing and wind and brass playing. And um, Tabuto was the kind of granddaddy of the Philly orchestra, orchestra wind uh, style. And so he would have been the beginning of the 1900s and was principal oboe in the Philly Orchestra. And then uh, John Delancey was after him, who got Strauss to write the second oboe concerto, which is so the sister piece to our Strauss II. I did not know that. So if you ever want a creative way to learn Strauss II, you can listen to the Strauss oboe concerto and the way that it's kind of, um, it's a run on sentency in the same way. Fantastic and it's fascinating advice. the way they phrase. Um, you can even play the second movement on your horn. Um, but, uh, and then um, We could arrange that. Adams. We could arrange the yes. oboe concerto for the next horn hangout for, <laughs> for six horns. Yeah, that's it. You got yes. it. Okay. And Dick Woodhams, who's uh, my colleague who just retired, he has a beautiful recording of the Strauss oboe concerto, as does your principal. Stuff, oh, yeah. I love. But, um, but the interesting thing about oboe is that I find that they're so colorful and so creative and so nuanced. So I always tend to look to oboes for the, the creativity of their phrasing. Um, and they're never really seeming to be all that worried about just the notes, and, but they do a lot of like micro phrasing and then also the beautiful big lines. So um, I do love the Tabuto. Uh, he has a numbering system of phrasing and there's a CD called Tabuto Lessons where he just kind of talks for a while, but in there are his ideas on phrasing, which I love, which are um, kind of about putting, attaching numbers to the, the way, where you are in the line so that you're making sure that you're actually sculpting the way you want. So it's not just, there's a beginning and there's the top of the phrase, but there's the, you know, there's the way you get there. And depending on what the line looks like, you can go straight there or you can go up above it, or you can kind of do it later, you know, whether it's a more of a wave or more of an even crescendo. And then same with nuances and harmony and push and release and just all the like fun little musical things we can bring, uh, you know, he, he has you sort of look at it at numbers. And also it's helpful with students who don't like to think in that way, but want to just have you tell them where to phrase to. You can actually just be like, just, you know, it's like one, two, three, you know, one, two, three, four, two, three, one, one. And it helps them to feel confident about like, yes, I'm a musical soul. I can phrase, I can sound beautiful. It gives us like a blueprint to follow when we're not sure or not feeling confident. So I like it for both ways. What I'm loving hearing about your teaching is that all these different facets you include, you teach the person, not just the horn player. Oh, well, yeah. No, it really <laughs> yeah, seems that. like that. You have your toolbox with the meditation and, and, you, and, and you take from other instruments, which I think is so important. Opera yeah. singers, uh, yeah, oboes, singers uh, yeah. violas, mm, well, yeah. maybe. <laughs> Any viola players watching? <laughs> <laughs> um, and 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 
and that, that is such an important thing. And I tell students that they have to go out and, and look at paintings and go yes. to jazz and eat good food. And it's, it's, it seems to be very important to you yes, too. Yes, I love that. Yeah. yeah, it's like art and the way that, like I, I always love to equate like um, brush strokes with um, like articulation. Yeah. So it's like just yeah. like, if it's a blob, then it's a push. And if it's a whoosh, you know, then it's a light wispy kind of brush stroke. So yeah, I think anything that's creative and keeps us feeling like, um, we're, uh, we're constantly growing and creating and doing something interesting with our minds, I think is, is the name of the game with a career that you want to go on for the rest of your life. I hey, just see. Shelley. Hey, Shelley. We've hey, got all sorts of coming. visitors here in the room. Welcome. 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 Horn come, on, for come, in. <laughs> come and say hi. We've got an, another member of the Philly Horn oh, section. Oh, Shelley, how's hi. you? Welcome. <laughs> this is so lovely that you come in. Shelley, everybody. <laughs> this Sorry, is very nice. It's so nice to see you. See you. I'm, I'm honored. Yes, what is it? You're, you're a utility... Uh, yeah, assistant in utility. Assistant in yeah. utility. Yes. So you play, you, you play every, you have to play everything, Pretty right? Pretty much everything, yeah. That's a... <laughs> and Shelly's a Curtis graduate. We have a couple of them in our section. Thank Three you for coming. Oh, okay, well, join the Philly you. ranks. We're waiting for the others. Where are all the others? <laughs> <laughs> um, I had a question. Yes, uh, Ben from Louisville, Kentucky. Louisville? Louisville, Louisville. Louisville. Oh, speaking of Louis, Jenna is watching with her dog, Louis, in the middle of a snowstorm in Seattle. Oh. So good morning, Jenna. No. Um, <laughs> um, what sort of playing opportunities would a student at Curtis have outside of the school in Philadelphia? Asking hmm. as a player auditioning there in March. Ah, see so you what in are your March. So what are your students, uh, where do they play? Hmm. Do they get to play extra with the orchestra sometime? Uh, no. That's oh. not as, yeah, that's not soon. as easy. Yeah, um, soon. Um, yeah, we have sublist auditions for the orchestra. We've sort of... Uh, gone that direction lately. Um, it used to be actually a very strong connection between uh, Curtis and the Philly Orchestra in that regard. Dan Williams, I think, was a student here when Mason Jones, he, Dan is our second horn, um, when, uh, I guess, who would it have Do been? we have a picture of the Philly horn section, Tim, somewhere? Can you show everybody who we're, who we're talking about? Yeah, yeah, I think it was, Orm it must have been Ormondy who asked Mason if he had any great horn students that could, you know, come and audition for him. And it was that uh, old school thing of like, Mason said, yes, I do, I have this young man. And so he came and, and did a private audition in his dressing room and, you know, that kind of mm -hmm. thing. So mm -hmm. the world has become very audition centered these days. So um, not as much, but Curtis has, uh, Philly has a ton of regional orchestras and a lot of local gigs. So it's actually out of, the U.S. cities that I've lived in, I think it's one of the best, I'd say, in terms of finding freelancing. New York a, isn't far either. Exactly. You so. can go to New York for gigs and D.C. and Baltimore. And then, yeah, we just have a lot of regional orchestras. It seems like this city really values classical music and it's got this really warm and nice historic, uh, you know, kind of tradition of it. And then also, so the audiences are there. So a lot of them, I think, play in like the local regional orchestras and your sort of orchestra, Philadelphia experience. Orchestra, Simon Rattle told me it was one, it's one of his favorite orchestras in the world. Oh. He just loves this tradition. We love him. He, he's a, I know, who doesn't? He's, he's so just smart. fantastic. Oh I know. But he loves conducting here and he said just to listen to this string sound, it's yeah. just so, there's so much tradition in your orchestra. Yeah, somebody, I think it might have been, um, oh gosh. It was one of the earlier conductors, uh, might have been Stokowski, said uh, it's that the sound of the string section in Philly is like uh, a diamond wrapped in velvet. And it's interesting because it's like, I, I just love the idea of having like a sound for an orchestra. Like historically, a lot of orchestras have their style and yeah. their tradition and their yeah. sound. And then it's just neat to even think of like a diamond wrapped in velvet. Yeah. What would that even sound like? Yeah. It's like, ooh. So yeah, it's I, a neat I like that idea. Yeah, it's That's like fun. warm, but brilliant. How does your section, I think next time I come, we'll do a Philly horn section, um, Philly horn section hangout. We Tell us just that. quickly how your horn section works because you, you, are, you are six. We have six. Yeah. Yes. Bizarrely enough, we couldn't find any pictures that had all six of us, but only six of us. So we need to get on that. <laughs> we have one with Julie but in it, with yes, Julie Lansman, yeah. So <laughs> we, we often take pictures when we have an eight horn piece, so then we have nine and we have, you know, all of these wonderful subs from other orchestras. That it's come become play. a tradition, a horn <laughs> section photos yes. after big events. After big events, yeah. but we forget to do it after like check four. Yeah. So <laughs> we should. But yes, um, Jeff Lang and I, um, our principal and associate respectively, all right, me and Jeff, and then Shelly is assistant utility and then we've got Dan on second, Jeff Kirshen on third, and Ernie's new on fourth before it was Denise Tryon. 
Um, so yeah, that's our section, and it's it's. I think we'll do wonderful. a horn hangout next time we come. Okay, great. Good. And um, we've got uh, Ma Mariana watching. Oh, Mariana! I know Mariana. Mariana, are you wearing your horn hangout T-shirt from Mexico? <laughs> She, yeah, and she's watching. She can finally watch live. She says, hi. Um, Evan Broadwell says, I have a feeling a lot of American horns, horn players use Geyer Knopf-style horns more than in Europe where they use mostly Alex horns. Is there a special reason? Availability, tradition, sound, ideal, or other? Mm. What did you play on today? Everyone, we need, we need the nerdy question. Right. Mouthpiece and horn. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, so this is a Rauk, so Freitas, Reverick, husband Daniel Rauk, makes these gorgeous horns that you probably all know of. Um, so yeah, I grew up in Northern Virginia, right outside of Washington, D.C., went to Juilliard. So I bought an 8D um, when I moved to Juilliard and started studying with Julie. And I think the style of horn playing that I had always heard was a lot of the 8D and kind of like Philly, New York, Cleveland type of stuff. And then um, once I got there, actually, I found it really interesting just listening to more recordings of other orchestras. And I found it interesting how like the Boston, Chicago, um, you know, like San Francisco, that it's like there was another style and then there was a European style and then there was sort of Vienna. I was like, oh, there's a lot of ways to skin this cat. And it's just fascinating. <laughs> this no, isn't that the worst expression? <laughs> It's along with eyes peeled. Keep I'm, your just, eyes I'm just peeled. glad you what? haven't sworn yet because oh. I, 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 <laughs> I heard an interview where they, they complimented you swearing in, your, in one of your interviews. But it's Whenever early. Whenever I get nervous. It's, it's early terrible. in the morning. Yes. <laughs> and it's Sunday. Yes, it's so true. We'll, you don't we'll want to swear on too anyway, much. Anyway, skinning, skinning your cat. Skinning your cat. Yeah. No, but I just I love that there's so many traditions. Um, yeah, I don't think there are as many Alexander players in the US as there are in Europe yet. But um, yeah, I think it, it's interesting the the way that the trends go. Um, but I mean, obviously, you own an Alexander, or am I, I not allowed do, to say this with yes. your with your section present? <laughs> <laughs> they know actually. Um, I actually played it for quite a while um, when I was coming back from my back injury. It was very very helpful because it just speaks a little quicker and it doesn't qu use quite as much of the like huge. <sighs> that my Rauk generally requires. So um, I did use it as a, as a nice, um, uh, and also the variety and the color in the, like the woodwind playing. So I, uh, I find it interesting to switch horns and see what brings out what in your own playing. And uh, like, I love being able to play an 8D and play an Alex and play a Rauk and sort of have it be, there's different ways, there's different composers that I think each horn works great for and they're different. Do you use and the same mouthpiece on with every horn? Here comes the nerdy one. questions. We always have to have yes. mouthpiece questions. Mm, very clean. I've had that <laughs> since 96. <laughs> no, there's no breakfast down there. <laughs> but it's so old. 96, what is it? Yes, uh, Jimmy Chambers, um, sort of like a Giardinelli uh, C10-ish, but it was a mouthpiece that Jimmy Chambers gave his Juilliard students when he was teaching there. So it's, um, Julie Landsman now has a, a whole line of them that um, are in different like, sizes. Like these. Like this. Like yes. this. Can you buy, is them. there a, is there a, a Gem Montone one or is that, is that just a standard one? Hauser makes them right yeah. now. Yeah. Hauser makes them. Okay. Uh, Hauser is a mouthpiece maker in Philly area. Okay. So, and then I have a Lawson rim. So okay. yeah, I haven't changed my mouthpiece at all. For I know. Some reason. I, I, That's I like never... the comfort. And then the other is the exploration. And it's... But you use the same mouthpiece on all your horns. You don't yes. change to oh, a... Oh no, I did, I did oh. change to an Alex mouthpiece okay. for my, for when I play on the Alex. Okay. Okay. Because otherwise it sounds very hollow. It doesn't work. American yeah. mouthpieces don't work that great on Alex horns. It's, it's, there are yeah. always exceptions, but uh, yeah. for some reason I, I find if, if, it, if there's a little, a little cup, yes. sort of a little rounding in the mouthpiece, it works better on an Alex than a straight down. But, Absolutely. You know, yeah. I'm not a mouthpiece expert. Uh, people say, oh, well, you know, can you tell me this? Is this three quarters of a millimeter better in the bore? And I'm like, ah. If it I sounds know. good, use it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know. Very Speaking well. of Juilliard and Julie, mm -hmm. I have something for you. I'm going to show it to you on my iPhone, and Tim's going to show it to the live viewers because I can't. We can't show you both at the same time. But Tim, are you ready to go? Um, hang on, I've got it here, um, and let's let's yeah, let's just get it in there. Hello, Jen. Greetings from the Horn Society Northeast Horn Workshop. We love you. Hi, Sarah. Hi. 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 Lots of love from New York. 
There you go. That's so nice. Isn't that nice? Thank you. <laughs> Julie and Michelle and, oh. and the students there at some northeast or northwest, yes. what is it? Northeast Horn Workshop. Northeast yes, Horn Workshop. Yes, happening and up in Long Island. Anybody watching secretly on their phone in the northeast uh, <laughs> uh, Horn Workshop? We'd like to know. I would, was going to be there, but I know. I'm here instead so today. Nice. So, so we have Kylie White um, saying, Jen, Sarah, and Victoria watching from my hotel in Los Angeles mm. and excited to audition for Curtis in March. All the people that are watching the Hangout, I hope they get a, a nice home advantage here. Um, uh, Miwa-san is watching from Tokyo. So hello to Miwa-san. Um, gosh, really, this is quite incredible. So I have a nice question from Stefan. Stefan Dor? No, I don't think so. But um, you never know. Um, how do you see the future of classical musician, uh, classical music? Don't you love these big questions? Oh. We musicians reach just a very small percent of the young people. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. The public is getting unfortunately older and older. The next generation is missing. I'm working on it. This yes. is why we're here. What, what do you think is necessary for us to do? I'm um, guessing what, what you're doing. What, um, I think the, the new generation of students and um, professionals who are creative enough to branch out of what we were taught into doing things that we are learning about in the world, I think is the future of it. I think. Um, computer and everything media related is probably the way to reach anyone with any topic. So it's a sad life, but music, this, is what, this is how you see digital people. Digital concert hall, you know, <laughs> like the Met, the way that the um, Met does their broadcasts in the movie theaters. I think anything in that direction. I know the Philadelphia Orchestra, we had some financial troubles a number of years ago, and um, we kind of have been clawing ourselves. Is that when you went on strike? Yes. But we've been trying ourselves. To even say that? Of course, oh, okay. it's a reality <laughs> of you know of American orchestras anyway. Um, but we've been clawing our way out of it, and I think it has to do with both keeping the standard very high for ourselves artistically and musically, and believing in the art form as a a beautiful um, you know expression of humanity, and then also being as open-minded and creative and moving forward with you know collaborations and creative ways to. To get ourselves out there and um, you know sort of just being incredibly flexible both in education and in media and in big orchestras and on all levels I think so it's it's when we start talking about the power of music and how it inspires and you, young people sometimes go like really? and they go back on yeah. their phones right um, so it is a big challenge but if you do fun stuff on things that they can look yeah. at on their phones yeah. that's, you know. there there's all sorts of people in our horn community doing all sorts of stuff uh, one of our mm -hmm. viewers F horn Patrick has a great YouTube channel which you know a lot of people are great fans of and 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 I do the craziest things I can find on the horn as well there's a lot yeah. of great stuff going on out there yep um, but it's still nothing can replace a live concert yeah. And I mean, that's our goal, is to get people into right. the concert hall. Yeah. Well, and I think there's, like, obviously music is enjoyed in every venue and in every situation. So, right, we're not going to lose the concert hall and the live and the traditional, you know, what we've all grown up loving. But we also, you're right, there's a small group of people that love that. And then there's probably a lot of people that would love the things that we bring in a more normal, modern format. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I think. I love that exciting. question. Thank you so much, Stefan. What I'd like to know from all you watching is what would you suggest Jen gets a copy of this chat afterwards and and this will be up with her hangout so we'd love to know what you would suggest um, if you guys have any ideas for cool hangouts yes. or or how you would put uh, cool stuff into 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 our teaching you know right. we're old fogies yes. here well. we're we're old ladies no. I'm <laughs> I want the I want the people yes. to write the contradictions immediately uh, <laughs> no but the ideas well one thing I think that's important on this whole topic is that in your educational years, when you're between 15 and 30, whatever, um, like when you're in college and in high school, I think like finding your confidence about your musical ideas and also your creative, like what is our field going to do ideas, I think that's hugely important. It's yeah. like, like believe that your ideas are worth something and that if you pursue them, they'll become something beautiful. Like that's a big thing for us to 
like and also believe in the, the passion you have for classical music because yeah. sometimes with all the practice we do with all the rushing around with all the Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat and everything else we do the passion for our music gets a little bit doesn't get lost it's always in there but it gets a little bit hidden and forgotten mm -hmm. in all this and that's why it's so hard in an audition to pull it out of the bag because in an audition we're not interested in whether someone's alive or uh, very active on social media or how much practice they've done we're interested right. in hearing that person bring music whether it's an orchestral excerpt or, or, a, you right. know, or Mozart. And that's where we've got to believe in the passion. And that's what I try and communicate all the time, whether you're talking or whether you're playing. Mm -hmm. That passion has to be, yes. don't lose it. Don't Absolutely. forget it. Absolutely. Well, yeah, and it's something, um, <clears throat> if you're doing this either as a, you know, as a student, an amateur, pro you know, professional, whatever level you play the French horn at or anything else, uh, you obviously care about it. So mm. you can always dig that out when you're feeling self-critical and perfectionistic about things. It's like we all get very, uh, you know, worried about what we're not, what we don't think we're good at, yeah. but we we do all have that passion. So if you, um, if you do sort of rely on that and find it again, it's like, I, I feel like the gift of what we can give is important to remember, so. <laughs> A message doing? from Handsome Tim has just come in saying gorgeous in camera and in person. Aww, thank you, Handsome thank Tim. You. <laughs> <laughs> We're so lucky to have Tim here from Melbourne. Really, I can't tell you how, how at peace I am when he is here running the live streams because it actually yes. he set it all up. So it's thanks to him. Yes. Um, you aren't old, says Andre in, in London. Thank you, Andre, for that. Um, Alex is watching. Uh, Alex Jum Jimbo Viteri is watching in Puerto Rico and sends abrazos. Mm -hmm. um, we've got now, Anthony in Naples, Italy, um, not Naples, Florida, Naples, Italy, says hi. This is really, I'm sorry, I could go on for ages and ages. Um, so there's uh, another horn question we can ask um, from Yui. I was recently able to watch the Berlin Philharmonic Woodwind Quintet live and was blown away by Fergus's soft playing. What are your tips for a pianissimo playing? I warned you it was going to be very random. It's yes, not the it's normal great. interview that, that you just have your list of questions yes. and you, you run with it. it. It goes, but all these things are going into, coming out of Jen's toolbox, right? Right. Well, um, I'm always constantly impressed when the when performers can uh, bring out the extremes of their, you know, of the range. So I feel like that's something I'm always working on. Um, and playing with your orchestra was actually a fabulous example of how soft um, and how blended things can be. I think with soft, we generally, uh, we need to feel comfortable that it's going to respond. So um, anything that's... That's always <laughs> useful on stage. Yeah. Anything in your warm-up that you can sort of reassure yourself that even without a ton of air, you've got the response there. So a little bit of mouthpiece buzzing, a little bit of um, maybe soft noodle flexibility exercises is helpful for noodle me. Noodle exercises? Explain noodle. People well, are imagining. Noodling. Yeah. Anything like that. Um, sort of, or just... Um, just air attack getting the, the, and then tongue the buzz attack. Going, yeah. yeah, like a soft, soft buzzing, soft air attack, so that you feel it. You want to be able to almost taste it. Mm. That it's like, okay, that's right there. There's this tiny little area, and it's going to buzz, and that's going to be the vibration, and that's going to be. I can. And I and I can rely on that being there. And then in the moment with soft attacks, I tend to. Um, if it's something that I have to pick off something high and soft, I'll do a lot of subdivision. I'll look at whoever's playing right before it and I'll hear their line. So I'm kind of jumping on their moving train. So it's sort of, it's already existing. And then I subdivide in it and, and then I cue myself in. You know, so it's kind of Do you a, cue yourself in with an air, with an air attack? So with, with your air? Or with your tongue? Yeah, I tend everything? to breathe in time a lot anyway, but especially on soft attacks, I'll be like... Yeah, da, 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 dum, da, yeah, da, da, da. yeah. So I, I would have myself, got that note. I know, right? I was going to say thank you for breathing. <laughs> I always find that when I'm teaching, I can't breathe yeah. and subdivide at the same yeah. time. So I'm hoping they fill in the dots. Yeah. But um, yeah, so something I find that time is very reliable. <laughs> Feeling like the buzz is, the is there is reliable. And then um, connecting ourselves to others, like not feeling isolated and alone, but feeling like I'm, you know, I'm part of this beautiful line. The oboe is going to hand me this line or the clarinet's going to, I'm going to be under them. So here I'll breathe with them and just try to float my line underneath them. So that's a wonderful piece of advice. Connectivity.
because how often do we feel alone on yes. stage? Even even as a we call us tutti schwein, it means a, one of the masses, you know. Mm -hmm. Even as 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 a fourth horn or an eighth horn or some, it can be the loneliest place in the world if yeah. you're not feeling great. But keeping your, what you say about keeping your ears open, that's very yes. important to you. Well, and it makes it that um, chamber music, which always feels so alive and creative and personal, then you can create small chamber music within you know any ensemble setting that you're doing. But yes, also from a mental standpoint, um, I like it because it's like either when we're playing, we're either giving a gift of you know love or beauty or excitement to an audience person, and you can imagine a certain person who might be experiencing pain or you know, like depression or whatever, and you can imagine playing for them and trying to help brighten their lives, but you can also then connect in a friend way and as if you're having a conversation with someone. And then it does kind of help us not feel isolated and therefore scared, like the isolation turns into fear or self-consciousness, but collectiveness and connectivity helps you feel, you know, how like can it's we more fun. <laughs> how can we fight against that feeling of, you know what it's like, you come out on stage, you're feeling absolutely great, you look by mistake in the audience, I right. try not to do that. And also, I, we have them sitting right behind us mm -hmm. in Berlin. Yes, you see too. one person who just completely freaks you out for some reason, a student, uh, a friend, someone, <laughs> you know. Uh, how can we fight against that? Do you know, you know what I'm talking oh, about? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, again, with the toolbox, I think uh, for me, I have, I have two that I like and I developed them in college with Don Green and one is like a, a locker on the side of the stage where I throw unhelpful thoughts and then I have a locker, like, a locker okay. like an imaginary. What does it look like? It's light blue <laughs> and after the thoughts go in it then it slams shut like as if someone as if Who's, I just Who went, slams boom. it? You slam it. I mentally slam mentally it. Mentally slam yes. it. Yes and then bad like you know crack notes I empty them with my slide and you know, so sometimes I've been told in solo performances, like, why are you like, you know, <laughs> slamming the water out of your horn? I'm like, trying to get the toxicity out, man. <laughs> like, trying to like, you know, or sometimes just even, you know, breathing out, you know, like blowing the person out of the room and then breathing in the space, you know, space of whatever freedom. And then I have a little a mental rocket ship that goes around me that's protective. So I kind of have a bunch of different like little imageries that help me feel like I'm in control of my mind. And then I find if I get going, then you start connecting to the like what you're playing and that it's fun and it's physical and you're with people. So I feel like I just have to get myself over the hump a lot and then get myself in the door and then I'm in there playing and doing what's you know, what's really cool. Can I come so. and study with you? <laughs> really? I'm Only so, if I can study with you. <laughs> I'm so inspired by this. This is really incredible. Really. Yes. Okay. Um, for every, all of you watching, especially on Facebook, is it still, is the Facebook stream, stream still going live? And are, people are probably chatting in the Facebook live. If people of you watching, uh, people of you, sorry, my German comes back at this time in the morning. I've been in LA for a week, so it's still very early. Uh, it feels very early. Um, uh, for those of you watching on Facebook, if you could, if you want to ask questions, pop over to the live page on my website because that's where I've, I've got this nice little iPad with all the questions coming in. Really great questions. Um, otherwise, you can just write hi and Jen will go on the chat later. I will make you go on the chat later. I will. Another thing we would love, especially all of you with these wonderful t-shirts, because I know a lot of you have them all around the world, um, and they are a great way to support the Horn Hangouts because, as you know, we, we support it all ourselves, um, except Alexander is helping us with this one. Gebruder Alexander, the horn makers, even though Jen's got a Rauch. Uh, my Alexander's up in the corner. Thank so you. thank you very much to Alexander for helping that. For all of you wearing a t-shirt, um, especially, but any of you, we would love a selfie of where you're wa watching from. Uh, keep it clean. Uh, <laughs> but we have some great uh, l loyal viewers who, who send us selfies. You can post them either on Twitter or on Instagram, hashtag Horn Hangout. Um, put them in the chat on Facebook. We'd love to see them later on. So we'll be doing some selfies later on as well. So wherever you're watching from, great, great, great. Um, back to everyone who's watching. Um, Anthony Smouse asks, are there any pieces in the orchestra that you don't look forward to? Hmm. Are they, I, I, I know what he means. There's some no. where you just think, oh, you've got to play them, it's your job. But there's a couple I think, oh, it means I've got to work a lot harder in the right. weeks coming up to it. I used to really not like Messian and Berlioz. Messian. Yeah, right. How do you say that word? Messian. Um, Messian, <laughs> right. Um, no, not... Uh, not too much. What I what I find challenging with orchestra once you've been in a particular orchestra for a long time or just been in the field for a long time is trying to make the standard things feel fresh. 
So actually, Yannick uh, Nezis, again, our music director, he recently had You're us. You're so lucky to have him. Oh, I love we him. We love yeah. him. You know, he's in, he's in Berlin this week. Right. And he sent me a text saying, looking forward <laughs> to, you, to, to, to seeing you this week. And I sent him a picture from the plane sorry, of landing in Philly. Philly. And he's like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Where are you? You've, you've uh, switched roles. Yeah. <laughs> um, but he, uh, he recently had our library just put all blank parts because I think um, the idea of how to, to re-envision a piece after you've done it a million mm. times, it's helpful not to always have your same assistant markings and your same crescendos and your same whatever. Or somebody else's if you've right. let the parts out. Yes. Don't you hate that when people yeah. have written in pencil right. really untidily and you have to spend <laughs> half the rehearsal rubbing it out? The only ones that are uh, distracting for me is different fingerings. Jeff and I have like uh, like he puts his fingerings on top and I put my fingerings on bottom so we just stay on our own <laughs> line so that I don't start like stealing his fingerings because yeah. he has a triple so then I'd be completely fine. Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> wrong notes. But um, no, I think, uh, yeah, it is, it is harder like to play Beethoven 7 over and over again and try to think of it a little bit differently. Um, and favorite pieces? Spots. Ooh, I like, I love Mahler. That's my, all of my favorites are Mahler. Um, Strauss and... Uh, Maybe Brahms. Oh, the Brahms is hard. But yes. Uh, Strauss yeah. is hard too. Mahler yes, is hard it's too. It's all hard, yes. I'm impressed. Um, Ty has been asking a few times. He wants to know about the Caruso method. Do you teach the Caruso method at Curtis? I do. I lightly teach the Caruso method at That's Curtis. That's a very important word. Lightly. Yes. <laughs> I, um, Caruso is an incredible method, as are a lot of the basic. Um, basics methods that we use as horn players. So um, I always feel a little self-conscious because I feel like it's uh, third hand and it's, I actually prefer to send my students to Julie's, Julie Landsman's Crusoe videos because she at least studied with him. So I think her way of doing them is a little bit more, you know, direct. I think the basics of the Crusoe method is simplifying down your brain into just calm alpha state where you're just developing like air and time, blow and rhythm. <laughs> so it's like just a very simple way to start your day and then you build a foundation which then you can rely on when you're playing. And it helps sort of solidify a lot of, um, a lot of the problems that we have. So if you have a Caruso warm-up or a Caruso-esque, you know, if you basically do any of your basics and warm-up things in a, um, you get yourself to a really simple mental state and then just really rely on the subdivision, the blow, and not trying to correct and also not be thinking about, you know, your boyfriend or your, you know, it's like your coffee date Aww. with whoever. Like, you know, it's like trying to like do your basics in a mindful way, yeah. then it, they'll stick better. So I do teach it kind of in, I teach the actual exercises, but I more try to, you know, sort of make a point of like, it's developing the foundation and it's connecting the mind to the body. Because a so. criticism of the Caruso method is that it can really actually damage people if they take it too seriously. Yes, and if you, if you do any of these, I mean, like the singer book or any stamp, anything, if you do the entire warm-up and if you do the entire one every single day, no matter what you have to play later that day, then over a long period of time, you'll end up with wear and tear. And especially if you're doing it without concentrating on taking a deep breath or using your stomach for support or keep your air spinning through your tongue. If you do it and then have bad habits while you do it, you're going to be playing on your teeth and you're going to toast yourself. And then they, later you'll, you'll be like, oh, that stupid warm-up was you know, was ridiculous and I never should have done that. And it's like, well, or you could have stopped at high G because you don't need to go all the way up to the C every single time, you know, 17 times in the, really? in the exercise. Yes. <laughs> Especially not at eight in the morning. So I do my, I do everything that's yeah. high and um, high basics. I do it later in the day of when course. my body's actually breathing well and stretched out mm. so that I don't do that. So. Speaking of your beautiful body, I don't want to get into this now because we, we actually don't have much time left, which is tragic because I have to do a masterclass with these yes. wonderful people. So, so we have to, we have to uh, get this up. If you guys have some more questions, write them in and maybe you have time on the train or something to go into mm -hmm. the chat Absolutely. and answer them for them. Um, so get your questions in for Jen. We can't get too many more um, on here live, but you had a really bad injury yes. and we won't go into that now, but on your website you are you are you are starting some videos about yes. how to um how to, to cope with these sort of things first thing you did was the shoulder yeah the, i sh did a, a a chop one with just um just very basic like tiny you know small chop injuries which i have not had and then shoulder injury which again i it was not necessarily my uh my injuries did not involve either of those but i did do videos with um 
colleagues where we talk about sort of little exercises to get you over the hump and also back into playing and just kind of the, the idea of patience and uh, you know, just like how, how to rebuild in a way that you feel confident that you've actually been able to, um, whenever you have an injury, you've got the opportunity to build your foundation again. And so you can check and make sure that the foundation that you built when you were, you know, 10 is actually like the smartest way to do it. You and had a to lot build times, within five, you had five minutes a day you were allowed, right, not exactly. even three yeah, at the beginning. I, I had a car accident, so I had a jaw injury, and then it ended up spiraling into a back injury. Your feet on the dashboard. Yes, don't, don't do that. Don't put your feet on the dashboard. Yes, so <laughs> that, and then that turned into a back injury, which yeah. now I'm dealing with and had a surgery for a couple years ago. So it's sort of two injuries coming from one event but yeah. yeah it's interesting I think the um the basic thing is that when you build back up you have the chance to rethink how you play and then um yeah there's uh, there's a beautiful website called Musicians Well that a colleague of ours um Angela Cordell Bilger put up with um with uh, injury recovery stories and mine were very minor compared to what a lot of people you know go through but I think um, there's starting now there's a lot of support in the online community about that and people are very willing to talk about that so definitely if you've ever had an injury and want to talk about recovery and all the resources please contact me but there's a lot there's a lot of there's um, a lot of support out there any any problem we have there's a lot of support and so and that's good. what's so wonderful and that's yeah. why I started the horn hangouts because because yeah. I, I was a very lonely student believe it or not and uh, there was just not you didn't talk about these things but these yeah. days these days there's a lot of support out there and also I l love to meet teachers like you who are not only interested in the, in the in the physical side of it but also in the mental and teaching the whole person I think that's what yeah. I'm taking away yeah. from this horn hangout the most <laughs> is that you are a true true all-rounder and an and amazing horn player <laughs> to go with it. Yeah. And we, I t it's always the way you guys, why do you come up with all the questions now? For the first half hour, everyone's like, mm. Mm. and then right, you, there's some fantastic questions oh, coming good. in. But we will, um, but yeah, your website's been posted. Oh, do you, co you. combine Farkas with Caruso? Yes. Yes. Good. Yes, the Farkas flexibility is exactly, great. Exactly, I do too. Um, there's all sorts of things. Uh, someone wants to know if you're gonna get a t-shirt. Um, yes. Are you going to get a t-shirt, so. Jen? Will Jen is going to get a t-shirt. There was a hashtag, will oh. I get a t-shirt? <laughs> Jen is getting a t-shirt. That's always one so, of the t-shirts. Yay! They are cool t-shirts, you know? Totally cool. If you wear them out, people sort of stare because they, this, this sort of right? pops like out at you. the heart you. and the horn? Yeah. yeah, so there you go. A heart horn t-shirt for you. Mm, and we you want you dear. to become one of our horn hangout heroes and get, we'll get a photo of you somewhere in Philly. <laughs> um, guys, we're going to have to say goodbye now because I have to go and teach and then I have to go to New York because um, it sounds very glamorous with only an hour and a half, right? Yes. I've got a masterclass at Juli Juilliard tonight and tomorrow at four o'clock New York time, which is 10 p.m. Berlin time. And Tim, God knows what time it is in Melbourne. He doesn't know what time it is now. So um, <laughs> we're doing a wonderful hangout with Eric Rowski, which is fantastic because he hasn't been so active online and we are changing all that yeah. and we we're doing it's something fantastic. special called an opera a horn hang on opera quiz where his students are going to be playing us opera excerpts mm -hmm. and there are prizes to be won so i want an amazing prizes that sounds so fantastic. i want everybody watching today to tune in tomorrow 4 p.m um for the next horn hangout you'll be there won't you yeah Mm -hmm. online absolutely. yes absolutely yeah. <laughs> and um win win some prizes but jen you are a true inspiration oh, thank, thank you thank so you. much and there's so much i want to talk to you about we're just gonna have to do part two and part three and part four <laughs> next time i thank come you in so much for having um me. i was thinking of a way how we can um finish uh finish the horn hanger if people want to contact you they can contact you via your e your website right yes. there's a contact email yeah, on there absolutely. and uh, devon has posted the link thank you um, thank you, Devin, for being there. Thank you, Alex Kasparovicius in Berlin, who's also been helping with the website. Thank you, Handsome Tim. <laughs> uh, thank you, Alexanders. I think Philip Alexander's watching right now for thank helping set us. Thank you, Curtis. And thank you, Curtis Horns. And Curtis Horns, because you've been so amazing, we're going to finish the horn hangout with donuts. You guys can... <laughs> donuts. This is, this is Victoria, who made the video. <laughs> who's also one of my Pacific Music Festival babies. Once uh, in the Pacific Music Festival, always family members. Come on. Come on, you guys, come and come and come on, you two, Patrick, come on, come and have some donuts. Um, oh, yes, yeah, so there are enough for all of us. Federal donuts. Look at that. Okay, so um, goodbye from Philly. Okay, grab, come on, let's, let's, let's munch. Which one shall I get? What's Which one is the marshmallow? No, I want, what's that one? 
Sugar. 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 Okay. Uh, can you get everybody in? Tim is everybody in. But Tim, we need you to come in. Oh, you can't really, can you? Okay, just wave in front of the camera and say goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye from handsome Tim. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Take that. In the <laughs> okay, now, oh my God, I got the most decadent one. Okay, so one, two, three. Lovely to see you all. See you tomorrow, four o'clock. Thanks, Jen. Bye Thank from you. Philly. Bye. Oh my God, that was amazing. It was good.